this is the benefit of how the Salaf used to say that in the Ilmu Makana is Sudur, La Makana is Sudur. So Rabna Satarna in the my notes I, I, I put them on the computer so that uh, my uh, flow of my thoughts can, can stay on track. I tend to uh, go on, uh, on tangents. So inshallah ta'ala will, uh, I'll, I'll stop myself uh, at 6.15. Uh, if I don't stop myself, you can just walk away. Jazakum Allah khair. Did you have a regular USB charge? I have Samsung. I'm lazy. I have Samsung. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. Yeah, in general, uh, we'll be talking about the rulings, some of the fifth rulings uh, pertaining to the tenth of the Hijra. I know that most of you. Uh, it's going to be a quick talk, inshallah ta'ala. So I know that uh, probably by now you have heard, maybe multiple times, that we are in the 10th of the Hijjah. These are the greatest days of the year for any Muslim. Prophet said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أَلْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ قَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ قَالَوا وَلَا الْجِهَادُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا رَجُلٌ خَرَجَ فِي مَالِهِ وَنَفْسِهِ فَلَمْ يَرْجِعْ مِنْهُمَا بِشَيْءٍ Prophet says, "No deeds in which, no days in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than deeds in those days, in those ten days." And they said, "Not even jihad fi sabillah." He said, "Not even jihad fi sabillah, except for a person who left out with his uh, wealth and self and did not return with either." So we know that we have established this. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to delve again into the virtues of these days, although. Reminding is, is is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ We are forgetful people. We need to remember these things. We, want, we, we need to discipline ourselves that when we hear the same knowledge back and uh, over and over again, every year we talk about the same thing. It is a good discipline for the self that we are establishing hujjah that if you know, then you should do, right? They say, قَدْ عَرَفْتَ فَلْزَمْ Now that you know, show me how you can implement it. I'll talk about some of the rulings. I'll focus most on things that are most forgotten. The Sunan al-Mansiya fi hadhi al-Ashr. أَوَّلُهَا التَّكْبِيرُ الْمُطْلَقِ The first Forgotten Sunnah of the Sunnah of the tenth of the Hijjah are uh, is the is the general takbir. Allah is the khair. General. Okay. Back. Okay. General takbir. Takbir al mutlaq. Thabat an Ibn Umar radiyallahu an. وعن عبد الله بن عمر وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنهما أنهم كانوا في العشر الأواخر عفوا في العشر الأوائل من ذي الحجة يخرجان إلى السوق فيكبراني فيكبر الناس بتكبيراتهما. يعني it was reported that it was authentically reported that عبد الله بن عمر and and أبو هريرة رضي الله عنهما would go to the market in the ten days of the Hijjah, in the first ten days of the Hijjah, they would go out to the markets, not with the intention to buy, but with the intention to remind others to make takbir. So they would make takbir, and people would make it, would hear them and follow suit. They would make takbir according to their takbirs. And takbirat al-thabita and sahaba iddat siyah. Ma fi siyah wahida. There's not a single specific siyah, but one of the most common siyah that is reported is هي الشفعة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد. Many other scholars have reported Imam Shafi has reported the different siya. Ibrahim Al Nakhai, Imam, also reported different that from the Sahaba different siya. This is not يعني whatever point form of takbir you find you 
you're used to, you find it brings you closer, closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may choose. But the point is that this takbir is mutlaq, has, is unbounded, has no limitations. You do it in the day, in the night, during these 10 days. Do you, do you do it at home, you do it in the street, you do it in the market, you do it in the masjid. This sunnah has become so forgotten that if you hear somebody uh, in the masjid say, making takbirat, somebody will get up and correct them. No brother, it's not the Ara Arafah. No, it's not Eid yet. SubhanAllah. This is the 10 days of the Hijjah. Takbir is mutlaq in all these 10 days. We don't have to wait until the day of Arafah. And the sunnah is for the men to make it in an audible, audible sound. Al-Jahr. بالجهر بالتكبيرات سنة للرجال ويستحب للنساء السنة for the women is to do it is to whisper it not to make it in an audible sound طيب is that established الحمد لله طيب that's different from التكبير المقيد is that the specific تكبيرات that we do on on the days of the Eid starts from starting from the Fajr of the day of Arafah even before, from the Maghrib of the day of Arafah. Okay? From the Maghrib of the day of Arafah until the Asr of the third day of Tashriq. 23, 23 Salawat for the person who is not doing Hajj. 23 Salat, Faridah, in which after each one, the Yustahabu uh, Takbir. So right after Tasneem. Before al istighfar and before Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam, nasa alayhi fuqah. Before starting with any dhikr, this has the highest priority. Once you do the taslim, you begin in takbir. For the imam, the imam has to turn around first before starting the takbir. For the people, they have to do it while they're sitting in their place. And they do the takbir. Wa yustahabu thalatha. Qiyasan ala al istighfar, qiyasan ala. سبوح قدوس رب الملائكة والروح بعد الوتر لأن التثليث أغلب يعني أبلغ في المعنى وفي الحاجة فكون التكبيرات المقيدة these specific تكبيرات are done after the صلوات on those five days from عرفة until to when until عصر of the third day of تشريق now, for the person doing Hajj, we said these are 23 salat, 23 Farid. For the person doing Hajj, he can't do it the first two days because he's busy doing what? What, do the, what does the Hajj say? Talbiyah, labbayka Allahumma labbayk. On day of Arafah, up until Dhuhr of, of Yom al So starting from after Dhuhr Yom al the Hajj begins begins the Salah. So he's, uh, for, the, for the pilgrim, they only do 17 Farida, they do Takbir Muqayyid. For the non-pilgrim, it's all 23 Salah. Tayyib? Al-an, these are for all the Farah. Whether they're done in the Masjid, whether they're done at work, whether they're done at home, as long as it's a congregational prayer. Hadith ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, إِنَّمَا التَّكْبِيرُ إِنَّمَا التَّكْبِيرُ لِمَنْ كَانَ فِي جَمَاعًا so it's only for a congregational prayer. If somebody does not, if somebody ends uh, to pray uh, alone, there is no takbirat in those specific days. I'm talking about what takbir al muqayyid the spe- specific takbir uh, after the salawat al farid starting from Arafah until the third day of Tashriq. Whether it's a man or a woman, whether it's a man or a woman. So if a woman attends the congregation. She does the takbirat al-muqayyida with the men. With the exception that she doesn't do it in an audible voice. She, do it, she does it in a low voice. Only to hear herself. For the men, they do it in an audible voice. If somebody catches the salah late, joins the imam at the second or the third, takbirat al-masbuq, kadalika sunnah. When he finishes, when he finishes, even if all the congregation has finished saying the takbirat three times, and he finished, then he has to do the takbirat, even if it's only by himself. Even if he's the only one who's uh, catching up with the salah, 
he does the takbirat or she does the takbirat in their place. Sunnah fiha the takbirat, just like all adkar by the salah. Sunnah fiha julus mahal salah. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nassa aliha fi hadith. That you stay in the place where you are sitting after you finish the, 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 the taslim and you do the takbirat. If a person gets up and moves and heads towards the masjid or the musalla, then remembers that he hasn't done the takbirat or hasn't done the adkar by the salah, it is sunnah for them to return to the place where they pray and sit down and make them. Okay? This means that it is tuqla. If a person forgot it for a small, small period of time, chatted with somebody next to him, or saw a friend he hasn't seen in a long time, got up and had, hugged them, or had a phone call or whatever, they go back after it, if it's a short period of time, they go back after it to where they were praying, where they finished their sleep, and they do the adkar ba'al salat, it's starting with they do the takbirat, most important. Okay? If they have left, if they left the masjid and yeah, if, if, thing, if something, uh, if they forgot it for a long distance, then tasbih. They can't make qada for it. You can't say, I want to do qada for last year's takbirat. If you miss it with a, with a, with a you know, uh, considerable amount of time and you leave the masjid and khalas, you can't do qada for it. However, scholars said, if you had a need, you work in somewhere, you the shop is open, you're, you're the person who's supposed to run it right after Salat. You can't sit and wait, something depends on you, your, your car parking meter is expiring or something. It is permissible. Right? If, you have, if you have a necessity that you can't sit after the Salat, then it is per permissible to do the takbirat, just like Adkar Salat, as you're walking out. So you start, you start doing them as, as you're walking away, if you have a necessity, and of course, it is not of the adab as the Sahaba has taught us, it is not of the adab to get up after the Salah before finishing Adkar as Salah. As uh, one of the young, young people here, as one of the young uh, people of the Sahaba, um, finished the Salah, and you know, subhanAllah, of, of, the, of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was praying right the next next to whom? To Umar radiallahu And so he finished the salah, he did the taslim and he got up immediately. So Umar radiallahu anh held him from his knee and pulled him down and put him and he said, Am I like a hajat to do? You have nothing you need from your Lord. It is enough, it is enough adab that we learn that when you are doing the salah, there has to be some deficiency in the salah, some forgetfulness, something that you were not focused with. So you sit after the salah so that you, as they, uh, people, you know, a lot of people call it, يَخْتِمُ salah. So I, I just want to perfect my salah by doing these afkar. If some shortcoming happened, that's why we do istighfar right after we finish the salah. Because of all the shortcomings that happen in the salah, none of us pray the salah in a perfect way. Prophet said, said, say, a person prays the salah and earns only its half of reward, or a third, or, or a quarter, or even a tenth, of, because of how much they they have focused during the salah. So these are these were the, uh, going back to what we were talking about, uh, these are the takbirat al muqayyad and takbirat al mutlaq Both of them are the same, are the same, uh, phrases to use, the same takbirat. The difference is, in these days right, we are in right now, you do the, the takbir day and night, any time of the day. Starting from the day of Arafah, you also continue to do the takbirat al mutlaqa but you also have the muqayyad. Is that clear? If a person prays by themselves, do they do takbirat muqayyad? Uh, they don't. But if they pray jama'ah at home, they do. Even if they pray jama'ah, if a person prayed jama'ah with his wife only. Okay? Yani if it was a jama'ah between one person of Ahl al and the person who is not Ahl al a woman, salah is not obligatory for her to pray jama'ah, but if, even if, it, if it was that kind of jama'ah, then they do takbirat. Tayyib. Tayyib. Yawm Arafah. We come to talk about the day of Arafah briefly. It's going to be on Thursday, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is the greatest day in the year. Scholars say, but how is this the greatest day in the, in the year? We have three ahadith, three different days that are the greatest days of the, in the year. Huh? Who can help? I just gave you a clue. So, Yom Arafah, there is a hadith. 
حديث البيهقي وابن حبان وكثير وابن ماجه وابو داوود وغيره ذكر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اعظم يوم عند الله يوم عرفه طيب ذس از جزاك الله خير من قائل الله يفتح عليك الله يبارك الحديث كذلك في صحيح مسلم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خير يوم طلعت عليه الشمس ايش يوم الجمعه طيب انا الثيرد القران يا جماعه الله يفتح عليك ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر. We spoke yesterday about a little thing about ليلة أن يوم. Do you remember? Those who attended yesterday. It was a small خاطر. But was ليلة القدر was مكية أو مدنية؟ طيب I'll give you that. I'll 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 save you on that. خلاص. We don't want to get much in time. طيب the point is there is a خلاف. But uh, the, the, uh, some scholars say the night of Laylatul Qadr is unprecedented. It's a thousand months, 82 years and a half worth of ibadah in that night. But they said the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, to A'adhamu uh, Yawmin عند الله يوم عرفة is exclusive to the daylight, to the daytime, from Fajr until Maghrib of the day of Arafah. Okay? أعمال فيه أجور الأعمال في في يوم عرفة عظيمة جدا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أعظم الدعاء يوم عرفة the greatest dua you can make ever is the dua of the day of عرفة أعظم الدعاء وخير ما قلت والنبيون من قبلي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير so you put you put an agenda, right? You're all business people, you're busy people, you probably use a calendar and stuff. You put an agenda, day of Arafah. This is something you need to be doing all the time. Saying what the Prophet includes in the same hadith. He said the great a'lamu du'a is du'a yawm Arafah. And the greatest words to ever any human to speak. The greatest thing that I and other prophets have ever said is لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. The greatest thing you can say. طيب. طب I add you some some virtues of of this of this phrase of this du'a. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says من قالها من قال لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير في يوم مئة مرة. Who knows what happens? الله ايوه قرأ نعم كان كعفقي رقب الله يفتح نعم نعم الله يفتح صح نعم يو ار سين ايوه الله يفتح عليك ما شاء الله حطت عنه 100 خطيئه وكتبت له 100 حسنه وكتبت له 100 حسنه الله يحفظك نعم لسه جايين وكانت له كعتق عشر رقاب من ولد اسماعيل طيب ورفع 100 درجه and there's a fifth in the same hadith رواه ابن السني وكانت له حرزا من الشيطان يومه ذلك ما جاء احد الله يحفظك يفتح عليكم ولم ياتي احد يوم القيامه بمثل ما جاء به إلا أحد زاد عليه. الله أكبر. This is all the virtues of saying لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وعلى كل شيء قدير. And there is a hadith, there is a hadith if I recall in the Nasa'i about whoever says it, uh, whoever sits from Fajr until Shuruq saying لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وله كل شيء قدير from fajr until sunrise كانت كعتق أربعة رقاب من ولد إسماعيل and whoever sits after عصر saying it until مغرب كانت كعتق عشر رقاب من ولد إسماعيل so this is something you put if Allah سبحانه وتعالى has bestowed upon you the greatest نعمة you can ever ask for on the day of Arafah which is having time فراغ 
having time to do ibadah. And this is a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the luckiest. You know, the, forget about jackpots in Las Vegas. The luckiest person is the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the ni'mah of al faraq on the great seasons of ibadah. You get a day off work, or you get a vacation, or you're, not, you're a teacher or you're a student, and the day of Arafah will happen to be a free day for you. You can multiply your deeds for hours and hours of ibadah. Reported some of the Salaf used to have an entire khatma on the day of Arafah. And there are so many, so many ibadah you can do. But the least you can think of is what the Prophet said, talked about the virtues of saying, La ilaha illallah, dahu la sharika la, dahu la mutu la hamdu abu rajahabi. Tayyip, fasting. We come to talk about fasting. Uh, we have time, inshallah. Now I'll try, I'll try to finish with fasting. We'll talk about the uh, Eid and then we'll finish it. Fasting in all those dates. It's generally under the generic category of al-amal al-salih. The Prophet says, مَا مِنَ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ حَبَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ طيب. Fasting is prohibited on the day of Eid. Prohibited. Huh? There are two days fasting is prohibited. The Eid al-Adha, al-Fitr, and there's Ayyam al-Tashrik. Right? So, uh, so other than the 10th of the Hijjah, fasting the first nine is strongly recommended. The first eight of the Hijjah, taking subsets, one at a time. The first eight of the Hijjah are absolutely recommended for every person, whether you're going for Hajj or not. Whether you're in Mecca right now, about to perform Hajj, or you're not going for hand. Fasting the first eight is recommended for every Muslim. طيب. There is a khilaf on the day of Arafah. The day of Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ did not fast. And some, some, there are reports from the, from the Sahaba that they discouraged fasting the day of Arafah for the person doing hajj. For the person standing in Arafah. Because it would tire them. And Arafah is, is, is exhausting. And, and so, yeah, to focus on the greatest thing to do, which is making du'a, you need to keep drinking water yeah, if, you're, if you're making du'a, so keep your lips wet at least. But they said, that, yeah, that there are three opinions. The opinions say that it's, it's makruh mutlaqan, and there's, you know, should, no, no pilgrim should, should fast the Arafah. Some people say makruh to those that they think that the fasting will weaken them, will not make them do enough du'a or, or, or uh, perform their ibadat on the Arafah, on the Mount of Arafah, on Jabal al-Rahmah, properly. And the third say, no, it is, it is permissible to do it, just like the non pilgrims But for the non-pilgrims, for the masakeen, ourselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not open this door of great mercy of us for this year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَرْزُقْنَا الْحَجِّ الْعَامِ الْقَادِمِ Amin. At least we have the great door of, there are other great, Doors of Rahmah. We have the fasting of the Arab. The Prophet ﷺ says, أَحْتَسِبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُكَفِّرَ عَنْ سَنَتَيْنِ I reckon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those whose fast is accepted on the, the fasting the day of Arafah, would expiate two years of sins, a past year and a coming year. This is one of the, this is the greatest single day uh, in, in terms of uh, the size of its reward, that has been mentioned in any fast. Two years of sins, previous year and a coming year. So do not, whatever you do, do not uh, let this go. Do not miss this opportunity. Even if you're not gonna be able to fast all the days of, uh, of, of the Hijjah right now, at least try to build up to make sure you fast, inshallah, on, on the day of Allah. Some people, this is a, a side note, a little bit of fiqh, a little bit of, 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 of fahm, and also adab ma'al ulama ma'al salaf. Some people go and, and, and open a book of hadith and read a hadith, authentic hadith, that Aisha radiallahu anha said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
never fasted the 10 days of their Hijjah. It's an authentic hadith. So they would read this and they say, aha, uh -huh, I know something many other people don't. And they would go and say, Khalas, fasting the 10 days of the Hijjah is bid'ah. Okay? Because Aisha radiallahu says, the Prophet didn't do it. Never did it. Play it. Khalas, how do you argue with the Prophet This is the correct opinion. No other opinion. Anyone who says otherwise is Muqtali. What do we say? Say la hawla wa la quwwata illa This brings us into a, a side topic, very important. This is the topic of people who jump into conclusions without asking the ulama. People who say, oh, we, we don't follow the madahib, the ulama. We follow the dalil. We follow the Quran, the sunnah directly. Okay? So we see this hadith, khalas, we apply it. As if it is the only hadith. Okay. The first response to this hadith is that Hafsa radiallahu anha, she would say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fasted the days of their hijjah. The one wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, he, I never saw him fast. And one wife saying, I saw him fast. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had multiple wives, صح? He would stay with Aisha radiallahu anha of the, of the uh, 10 days of the Hijjah. He would stay at her house at maximum twice. صح? And he would stay in Hafsa's house at maximum twice. One of them says, I've never seen him fast. One of them says, I've seen him fast. Which one overrules the other? That's a very simple solution. Al Muthbit, Al Muthbit, the person who negates, negates based on their, on their own knowledge. So if there's another person who says, no, no, affirms, it means that they have more knowledge than the person who negates. That's the Prophet, another hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha says, مَا بَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَائِمًا قَاطِ وَمَنْ حَدَّثَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَالَ قَائِمًا فَقَدْ كَذَبْ she said the Prophet ﷺ never urinated standing up. And whoever claims that the Prophet ﷺ urinated standing up is a liar. This is who Aisha radiallahu anha speaking about the Prophet ﷺ. There are a number of Sahaba reporting that they saw the Prophet ﷺ walk away to a wall or behind a garden wall and then he urinated وسلم, standing up. But which one do we say? Do we say, oh, they must be liars? Khalas, throw the Sahaba, they make them liars? No. We say, this is her knowledge. And we say, al muthbit yuqaddam ala al manfi. Ala al munfi. Sah? Al muthbit yuqaddam ala al munfi. The person who affirms, it supersedes or precedes the person who, who negates. Because it's each are doing according to their knowledge. That's number one. So th th this is the first thing. Yeah, we negated the fact that this hadith is an established rule. Number two, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to establish a sunnah, he doesn't have to do with limited time. He might be busy doing with the amal of taking care of the hujjaj or teaching people their hajj or whatever it is that they do not have. That he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not have the time himself. To fast, okay. So that does not just because the Prophet ﷺ did not do something, it does not mean it is not sunnah. If he commanded it, or if he encouraged it, then it is sufficient. Or at least, if he saw the Sahaba doing it and he approved of it, that's in a sufficient to establish that this is a sunnah. The sunnah is not only established by al-qawl; it's also established by al-fi'l or bil and it is. Affirmed that the Sahaba fasted the days of their Hijjah. And there was no negation from the Prophet on their action. Like, lastly, we you know, re respond to this by saying, you know, Those Imams of the Sunnah 
who reported these ahadith and then reported that it is strongly recommended to fast. Are they, يعني, are, يعني, do we accuse them of ignorance? Yeah? Do they uh, narrate the hadith and they don't understand it? Now we come and say, oh, now we are the ones who understand it? This is not the way. The way is that we understand, we, we understand our deen the way that the Salaf has understood it. And how they, they narrated it with their understanding. So we take it all together. It's a full package. We don't come and pick, nitpick on what to choose and what not to choose. Uh, that was the end uh, re related to the fasting. Lastly, we'll talk about the Uthiyah. Jazamullah Khir and Ustad Ali, they have, uh, they announced several times that they're preparing, they're, they're welcoming people who want to do Uthiyah. Uthiyah, or uh, Daisy Brothers call it Qurbani, it's the same, same, same word, uh, same meaning, but it's a, it's a sacrifice that is uh, a sunnah set from Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is sunnah mu'akkada. It is strongly recommended. And focus on this. The scholars say al-udhiyah sunnatun mu'akkada wa tarkuha makruh. This is not redundancy. It's, uh, scholars don't have too much time to spend by the, repeating their word in, in different ways. There are two things to specify here. Number one is that the Uthiyah is a strongly encouraged. It's a sunnah mu'akkada, definitive sunnah. Okay? The second thing, tarkuha The second thing is that to abandon the Uthiyah, to not offer a, a sacrifice, qurban, is something that is discouraged. Like, isn't it enough that they, they, they say Why do why do they have to? Is this redundancy from the ulama? Like, is this repeating without extra words, without necessity? Isn't it enough just to say the sunnah ma'akada? خلاص, people understand. I shouldn't leave the sunnah ma'akada. صح؟ صح؟ Not necessarily, because some sunnah ma'akada. Some Sunan Muakkada Tarkuha Right? Some Sunan Muakkada Tarkuha Muharram Depends on what is the Sunnah And it's The fiqh is not, is not just uh, symmetrical sometimes there, the, the, sometimes there are actions that are wajibat Okay? Al wajib You do it What we understand the wajib You must do it You don't do it, what happens? It's a sin Sah? Tayyib Sometimes the wajib, you do it, you don't get a reward. You don't do it, you get a sin. Sometimes the wajib, if you don't do it, you get a sin. But if you do it, you don't get a reward for it. Just by doing it. Like a nafaqa. Scholars give an example. A nafaqa. Spending on your kids, on, on, on your dependents. On your wife and your kids. If you do it, if you don't do it, it is sinful. If you do it, you don't get a reward. Unless If you do it with the intention, you're not just feeding your wife and kids or buying them clothes or taking them out, but you're doing it with the intention that you bring joy to your family, that you make it easier for them. That you help them, that you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you do it with the intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you get a reward. But not just by doing it, you get a reward. It's important to hold these intentions. So we go back. We say al uthiyah is, uh, is a sunnah mu'akkada wa tarquha makru. For people who can afford. People who can afford an uthiyah, it is strongly discouraged to to not do it if you can afford it. Like, يعني, it's not that uh, it's not that cheap if you're a student or scram scrambling through life. Three hundred and how much? Three hundred and fifty for a lamb and three hundred and fifty for a goat. Mashallah. Amazing. Three hundred and thirty for a goat uh, for a lamb and three hundred and fifty for a goat. Um, and it's, it may not be something that everyone has on, on their to spare. 
If you can't, before I say if you can't, let's talk about if you can. Mashallah, you're all wealthy and have a lot of money. Inshallah, you'll be doing 10 Lutayas each, not just one. Um, if you can, then the sunnah is to is to do the uthiyah and to split it into three parts. The tathlif al uthiyah sunnah. To take one part to you, to give one third to you, your household, one third to your neighbors, family, extended, and then one third to the poor people. This is the sunnah. Okay? Now, if you can't afford the 350, there are more affordable options. You can delegate someone to do an uthiyah on your behalf. So you lose some of the sunnah. First, the uthiyah is sunnah that you do it in your own locality, where you live, where you are celebrating Eid. You do the uthiyah in the same place where you're going to celebrate Eid. Okay? So uh, you, if you if you delegate someone in a different country, you'll be losing that sunnah. You'll also be losing the sunnah of splitting it to thirds, because if you're doing it in a different country, probably you're doing it completely for for a donation. Uh, but if that is the only option, it's either that or not doing any utfiyah, then please go ahead and do it. If you if you look up, there are so many different websites. There's the most famously Islamic Relief. They have an utfiyah camp every year. You can give an Uthiyah in Palestine, you can give an Uthiyah in Afghanistan, you can give an Uthiyah in Pakistan, you can give an Uthiyah in Somalia, you can give... And their, their prices range from like $80 for a land. Um, it's significantly more affordable. You can, you, can, you, can, you can slaughter five lambs for the price of one in Canada. But I'm saying, I'm not saying that slaughtering, even if you slaughter five lambs uh, abroad, will not get the full edge of doing one in your locality because of all the other sunnah of doing it yourself. Of course, that's also a sunnah if you're able to do it. If not, at least then dividing it in thirds and all and all the such. And having it distributed on the day of Eid is another sunnah. So people don't have to, that's the whole purpose. So people get to eat meat on, the poor people get to eat meat on the day of Eid. They don't have to wait for several days afterwards. Like what happens if you send donations overseas through an organization. It might take a week or several weeks until they actually get them at the meat. So the point is, if you're not going to afford it, at least make sure you donate it to someone who can who can give a lamb or slaughter some meat. If you can afford uh, to do the uthiyah, be how an ahmed. If you want to do an uthiyah here and send more, bismillah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who knows how many. Who, who knows how many animals did the Prophet ﷺ sacrifice in his Hajj? Two. Sixty? Sixty-three. The Prophet ﷺ slaughtered sixty-three animals. He's, one of them was for Ali Muhammad, for himself, ﷺ and his family, and the rest for the poor people of Ummah Muhammad who cannot afford to do a nuthiyah in their hajj. It's, uh, yani, uh, yeah. But don't limit yourself to it. Now, bringing us to the point is that you don't only have to do the nuthiyah with a lamb or a goat. These are the most favorite, easiest options. But you can also do the nuthiyah as a cow or as a camel. Because the cow and the camel are much bigger, you can do it, you can uh, share, take a share in a cow and a, and a camel with several people doing several households in the single cattle, the single uh, cow or, or camel, to a maximum of seven households. I don't know how to count that. Seven households. Seven households is the maximum you can do to share a cow or a camel. But keep in mind, there is an important ruling, which is, إِذَا عَيَّنَهَا تَعَيَّنَتْ There's a general qa'ida, several rulings under this. So if you go and you see a, uh, if you call someone and you, and you say select a sheep from you, or if you actually go yourself to, to the farm and you point at a, a certain animal, you say, I want this to be my uthiyah, then it becomes obligatory upon you to slaughter that specific animal. You can't opt to choose uh, to cancel afterwards. Okay? If you have set it, and then uh, days later you said, oh, I, there, there's a famous 
football game coming I want to buy tickets for and maybe I'll cancel Uthi. Whatever it is. You can't cancel the, the niyyah of the Uthi. Once you have made it, it is becomes Fard'ayn. Okay? The second thing, you can't opt to something less. Scholar, as some scholars said, it is permissible to opt for bigger. So you, you opt something and you choose it and it becomes obligatory for you to slaughter it, but then a day after you see a bigger animal or you choose to go from a sheep to a cow. It is permissible to upgrade. Just like telecom companies, they can't let you downgrade. Upgrade or downgrade. Just upgrade, you're allowed to upgrade, okay? The second thing about the rule is if you go and call a, uh, a butcher and say, uh, we're, uh, we're sharing four of us. Four of us are sharing a cow. And so you make the ta'in that there's four of you who want to share this specific cow for Uthiyah. The next day somebody calls in and once it says to you, I'm looking to slaughter a cow. He's like, hey, we've got extra slots, join us. You can't call and say it's now five because you have set that it is this cow that you want to slaughter. You ordered someone that this cow is to be slaughtered among four households. You can't expand on that. So once you share, once you decide and, and make the order, you can't come and modify and say, oh, I'm adding a fifth or a sixth or a seventh, even though initially you could have done so. Even though that you initially could have done so. These are all rulings related to a ta'in. Once you specify the animal that you want to uh, sacrifice. Okay? Was there something else I, want, I wanted to mention on the... On, on the heavy? Same. Same thing for the camel, yes. Also seven, yes. <coughs> well, I'm six minutes early and I forgot what was the next point well, I wanted to say. Yes, so if I, Jazakallah khair, mashallah, he brought back my uh, train of thought. Thank you. Yes, so if you only decide, you, if you want the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi slaughtered uh, camels, not just uh, sheep and uh, slaughtered 60 camels. So not just sheep and goats. You can do uh, you can do a full cow by yourself. You can slaughter a full cow. Whatever, whatever generosity you show, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will show greater generosity to you. Okay. وما تقدم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خير وعظم ما تفعله من خير يعلمه الله تزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى نعم The last thing is Can you combine intentions with the Udhiyya? Which brings us to the last topic I just remembered about Salah Can you combine intentions with the Udhiyya? The Jumhur of the Fuqaha that you cannot you must slaughter this only for the sake that it is an old hail. Okay? The opinion that uh, Imam Ahmed al Hanbal, Jumhur al Hanabila, upon this, is that it is permissible to combine the intentions. Whether it is a pilgrim combining an old hail and a hali, or a non pilgrim combining an old hail with a aqiqa. So it's the same sheep by you're doing it for multiple intentions. That is uh, something that was ruled uh, permissible by, by Imam Ahmad Muhammad. Last thing was about Salatul Eid. Salatul Eid, between the, uh, this, uh, the ulama, they're upon the opinions that it is a Sunnah Mu'akkada, or that is fardu kifaya, and some have said it is fardu ayn. So, the meaning that some scholars say that every single Muslim must do it, uh, this is a very minority opinion. The majority of the scholars are between that it is sunnah mu'akkada or fardu kifaya. Fardu kifaya means that it's an like obligation upon the community, every community. Here in Vancouver, there must be Salatul Eid. If no Muslim celebrated Salatul Eid, prayed Salatul Eid in Vancouver, 
then every Muslim in, in Vancouver will be sinful, will share the sin of not upholding Salat al -Hid. But if, if enough of the community joins the Salat, and then a few people could not attend because of work or because of other obligations, then they are not sinful, inshaAllah ta'ala. Tayyib. Salat al Eid will be on a Friday. We get this question every five, six years whenever this happens. Salat al Eid will be on a Friday. Does it suffice to just pray Eid and not, not uh, Jum'ah? There are two opinions uh, to, uh, among the four that. The opinion that, well, two and a half opinions. The opinion of the Jumhur, of Al Ahnaf, and Al Malikiya, and a lot of the Shafi'iyya, that it is not permissible to skip Jum'ah because of Eid. The Eid does not suffice of Jum'ah. That you pray Eid in the morning and then you pray Jum'ah when if, if they're on the same day we're talking, which is happening this Friday, inshallah. The mainstream Shafi'i, however, are upon the opinion that they distinguish. They say this, the people of the city, the people of the city, where it's not really, really difficult for them to come to the masjid, then it is obligatory for them to, to do both. They can't, they can't skip Eid, they can't attend Eid and skip Jum'ah. They must do Eid and Jum'ah. Okay? And the people who live in farmlands or live outside the city, where it's very far for them to attend to the Salat either way, then Eid only suffices. Okay? And the madhab of Al-Hanabila is that it suffices either way. Anyone who attends Eid does not need to attend to For the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, he gave after Salat al-Eid when, when Eid was on Friday, he said that we are going to pray Jum'ah. Whoever wants to attend it, uh, let them. And whoever doesn't, let them. And we know that Salat al-Jum'ah isn't obligatory. So when the Prophet ﷺ gave that choice, it means that it gave the, the permissibility to, to not attend if it's a difficulty, and if, it's, if it becomes a difficulty. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And I'm exactly done at 6.50. Allahumma salli wa sallam 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 ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم خذ ايدينا ونوصينا اليك يا الكرام عليك اللهم هب لنا من لدنك عملا صالحا وتقبلنا اليك اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اصلح لنا شاننا كله ولا اكلنا الى انفسنا الفرق في العين يا غيات المستغيثين اعرفنا اللهم اعرفنا اللهم اعرفنا اللهم ارفع غضبك ومقدك عنا اللهم ارفع غضبك وسخطك عنا اللهم ارفع غضبك وسخطك عنا ربنا اتنا اللهم فرج كرب المقربين ورمى المهمين ورمى المهمين ودين المدينين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم مرضانا واستجب دعاءنا ولا تخيب لك يا إلهي رجاءنا واختم الباقيات الصالحات أعمالنا يا كريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا والمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ذل للذين آمنوا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى أزواجه من الناس المؤمنين وعلى ذريته وأهل بيته وبارك اللهم تعالى صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى صحبه أجمعين وعلى الصحابة والتابعين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك الله وحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وجزاكم الله خيرا Thank you for listening and sorry for extending this over جزاك الله كل خير